in the central uh, river region in Makati. Uh, yes, at Georgetown, now called Janjamburi. And when it started, some of the few educated people, you know, Gambians at that time, they called the attention of the colonial administrators that there is a cholera on Georgetown Island, that's Janjamburi, and because of the movement of people, you know, traders especially, uh, between Makati Island and uh, Batos. Yes, yeah, the merchants um, won. Okay, some of the merchants and the few educated people in the you know, town warned the colonial administrators that there is a cholera epidemic in Makati Island. So something should be done. Okay, so as to quarantine you know, bottles you know, from the epidemic. And possibly because, spread around. Yeah, because you know, then you know, ships and vessels you know, carrying groundnuts and so on you know, used to come from Makati Island to Batos. The river transport was yes. booming in those days. Exactly, the river transport was booming. Mm -hmm. But the colonial administrator, uh, you know, the governor you know, at government house, I uh, was calling, uh, I mean, like Colonel Petty. Colonel Petty, was the governor then? Yeah, mm -hmm. he didn't take the uh, warning seriously. Okay? The reaction. Yeah, you know, he reacted very lately. Mm -hmm. So before they knew it, by the 3rd of May, 1869, you know, cholera had entered Batos. Mm -hmm already in the city yes and by the 5th of May a uh, people were dying in large numbers, in large numbers. so the you know colonial governor um, he was panicked now, how did he react to, how did the colonial government react to this I mean uh, well led the action led the action what he did was he you know called the only two medical doctors in the whole country yes. in the whole colony so you want to say there were, there were only two medical doctors in the country yes. then yes you know one was for you know the military hospital mm -hmm. and one was you know for the rest of the civilians, the civilians. okay so the entire population of the city yeah. had to do with only one doctor yeah that was a state during the colonial period you know okay. a, a, a state of affairs mm -hmm. so he called them and they told him well mm -hmm. you know the disease has already struck mm -hmm. Uh, we could have done something earlier to prevent the spread you know, from Makati. But since now the disease is in town, um, only two things we can do. One is to erect, I mean, you know, some, uh, what they call, I um, mean, you know, uh, you know hospices. You know, that is, you know, to erect some huts where those who are uh, affected. Emergency, from emergency medical services. Yeah, you know, will be, you know, sort of, you know, I, I mean, secluded, you know, they will put in quarantine there so as so that they will not you know, infect the others in their household. Uh, that was one option. And now the other option, I was really to try and burn, yeah, households, uh, you know, where the disease yeah, uh, I mean, you know, I um, mean, you know, has, I, I has sort of, uh, I mean, uh, infected. Okay. So you can see those were two drastic measures. Really? What part of the city was most affected? Well, the most affected part was the part we now call Half Dye. Because this was the part where the poor people stayed. What was it called in those days? Uh, well, in those days, it was called Mokam Town. And this was a place where the strangers, you know, the migrant laborers from Combo, from Yomi, you know, when they came, you know, to the town, you know, in search of, you know, jobs with the trading companies, you know, as laborers, as cleaners, as night watchmen, as soil men, and so on and so forth. Uh, they stayed in this part of Batos, you know, called Mokam Town. Yeah, in those days, it, it was called Mokam Town. And it was really a very decrepit, you know, infested, I mean, you know, part of the town. Very, very unhealthy. You know, there was no sanitary... I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, like facilities. Sanitation no. wasn't big no. on the priority of the colonial government. Uh, uh, no, I mean, the colonial government was only concerned with the richer parts of town, like the marina, uh, where you had the colonial civil servants living, places like Wellington Street, you know, where you had the merchants, you know, the rich merchants, white, and few black merchants living, you know, but the rest of the city, you know, the town, like Mokam Town, they really, you know, they were on their own. Yeah. Fend for themselves. So by the tenth of May, mm -hmm. you know, just to continue the story, mm -hmm. 1869, 1869, the cholera had reached a very, very frightening level. Mm -hmm. 75 people were dying a day. 75 a day. Yeah. I mean, 75 Gambians were dying a day. In fact, the, you know, the death rate was so much that they did not have people to bury. Oh. I mean, the people who have died. 
Yeah, because people fear, you know, that you know when you take the cholera victim, yeah, you, you may be infected. And to make matters worse, the medical doctor himself if he fell ill. So uh, what was done about this? I mean, a uh, colossal number, masses of people who were dying on a daily basis. I mean, 75 yeah. on a... Uh, corpses were rotting in the street. I uh, you know, we have, uh, um, you know, records in the archives uh, where the streets of Batros uh, were just thrown uh, with corpses. A uh, pool were just collapsing and dying. It was the worst yeah. history of, yeah. of the city. And there was nobody to bury them because yeah. people were frightened. You know, to touch them. This was the worst episode yeah. in the history of the city. Yeah, indeed. And and from the records, it's very sad because really some of the people, you know, some of the victims, in their pockets, you know, they had money, you know, they had you know jewelry, you know, you know, they had gold coins. Meaning that some of the people who who died were workers. You know, some of them had just been paid their salaries. You know, I, I mean, for April. But they couldn't reach home. They couldn't reach home, and there were no medical, uh, you know, I mean, facilities to go to. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There was yeah. only one doctor yeah. Yeah. at the disposal of the entire city, and he himself was, I mean, he under the threat Ill. of. Yeah, he fell ill. Like, like on the third day of the epidemic, he was overstressed that he collapsed and fell ill. So there was only one medical doctor. You know the. You know, military doctor military who was in town. So he was quickly summoned to the city. Yeah, but you know, there was little that he could do. He tried, but he couldn't do much. Now, uh, but the real crime, you know, the real, um, you know, um, you know, the most unfortunate thing was that you know um, the governor, the white governor Petty, he still refused to bring out money from the treasury um, to help, you know, the. Yeah, yeah, his, I mean, like the, I mean, like the affected people. Apart from his late, I mean, and slow reaction, yeah. I mean, he was reluctant as well yes. to, I mean, use the state resources, the yeah. colonial government's resources yeah. to help the people. Uh, people were dying, but he said he had to get instructions from London. From London. And you know, in those days, you know, to uh, communicate, you know, from Batros to Freetown, uh, because then the governor general was in Freetown. So the uh, governor in Banjul, like in Batros, would have to write to the governor in Freetown who will, you know, I, I mean, forward the letter to London. Meanwhile, uh, so meanwhile, people were dying, uh, but Governor Petty was saying that I have to get instructions before I spend a single, you know, pen, you know, like penny or dime, I have to get instructions. Now, uh, so when the death rate reached I mean, a crescendo, the merchants and the few educated people, they sent a delegation to him. They told him, look, 